been a tit for tat, a retaliation by the Indian government out here. A senior uh, diplomat from the Canadian mission has been asked to uh, leave. He's been expelled for uh, for uh, anti-India activity in in the next five days. He's got to leave the country. Uh, there has been uh, a reaction from the White House and also from the Australian Foreign Minister's office saying they are uh, deeply concerned uh, of these allegations. Now, India uh, has rejected the allegation, saying it is uh, it is absurd and motivated uh, from the from the Canadian government. It says that such unsubstantiated allegations seek to shift the focus from Khalistani terrorists and extremists who have been provided shelter in Canada and continue to threaten India's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Now, it's certainly one of the lowest points in the uh, India-Canada uh, diplomatic relationship. Uh, it has been frosty for a few years, but this has obviously upped that ante now. Uh, the Indian government very sensitive about Khalistan, which is a, uh, a separatist movement uh, which uh, had taken place in the 70s and 80s and early 90s in, in the country with a lot of militant uh, activity and terrorism, uh, in, particularly in Punjab and North India. Uh, most of this has died down now in India, but uh, uh, there are remnants of this in the West where uh, there are campaigns uh, being organized by organizations and Mr. And, and, and Nijar was uh, one of the vocal campaigners for uh, the Khalistan movement, the separatist movement. Uh, he was designated uh, Indian terrorist, uh, a terrorist by the Indian government in 2020 and, uh, and, and in the summer of uh, this year he was shot dead by two masked gunmen. Now, these allegations are obviously very serious, but uh, in terms of uh, the diplomatic relationship between the two countries, it is at its nadir at the moment. Okay, Neville, thank you very much.